Hi everybody, Vegas Film Critic here, Jeffrey K. Howard. Just wanted to throw in my two cents after seeing the Oscars last night for uh, 2016 uh, with host Chris Rock. And look at this, I got this in the mail today. My Hollywood Reporter featuring Chris Rock. I'm a big Chris Rock fan. And of course the Academy Awards this year were surrounded by controversy for the lack of diversity. And in the nominations this year, especially among the acting categories, uh, which is true. I mean, my favorite film of 2015 was Creed. Straight Outta Compton was incredible. Um, we also had, uh, what was the other one? Um, There's just a lot of movies out there that just didn't get the recognition. So they had, it, it was very obvious when they started diving into the how the Academy works with the 90% of them being white males and over the age of 60, 65, and just like they were really out of touch uh, with with the movie going public. So Chris Rock, we knew was going to get on there and really do something controversial, of course, and uh, bring awareness to it. Uh, and including the Academy president came out at one point, and she was like, "Who's an African American herself?" We said, "Look, we, we we're taking steps to correct this." And you know, there's a lot of debate. I do a lot of talk radio, you know, here in Las Vegas. So there's debate about, you know, wait a minute, just because they didn't get nominated, can you say that's racism? And so there's all this going back and forth. So Chris Rock really was the elephant in the room, was going to address all of this, and you knew it was going to be cutting edge. You knew it was going to be, you know, get ready with that that drop button, you know, in case he uh, said something that was really out of out of control uh, for. Our ABC prime time. So overall, I thought the opening monologue, great jokes, great, made a lot of people uncomfortable, a lot of people in the audience, not only the actors, but the movers and shakers in Hollywood, and that's, you know, pretty much who the upper ceiling hits, you know, when it comes to hiring people, it's because of the people who run the studios, not so much a director or something like that, but it's about the people who make all the decisions and the people who have the money. So Chris Rock did just a really good you know, nail-biting satire all the way through the opening monologue. My complaint is, it just kept hitting you over the head during the whole four plus hours. It just over and over and over. Every joke, uh, these little video skits they did, like, you know, worthy of Saturday Night Live, it just kept getting, you know, over and over. Like, okay, you made your point, I understand, but then after a while, you just kind of just like, being shamed into watching the Oscars, you know? It's like, it shouldn't be like that. We're there to celebrate the films, we're there to celebrate the Academy, and, you know, of course, there's some problems and they're gonna make progress with that, but the entire telecast we had to keep making these these jokes constantly and shaming people and that's how i felt you know after a while i'm like all right chris i got it i understand you even poked fun at will smith you know we made 30 million 20 million dollars and and all that so anyway i just thought that just got to be overkill over and over and over and i was just like okay okay geez you know what am i i couldn't i felt like i couldn't do anything about it one of the highlights of the night I have friends who have girls, little girls who are in Girl Scouts. So uh, Ellen, a couple years ago, brought pizza for everybody. That was a great moment. This was another great moment where he's like, everybody in the audience, everyone at home, you know, buy Girl, Sc girl Scout cookies. And I think he said he raised $65,000 by the end of the telecast. But there were people, you know, in the audience who had $100 bills waving around. So I was like, oh my gosh, I mean, that was just a classic moment. I like the lemonades. Not anymore. I'm on a restrictive thing now. But uh, I love Girl Scout cookies. So I thought that was a great moment. Another weird moment with Chris Rock was Stacey Dash. I just didn't understand. I understood that she got in trouble on Fox News for decreeing, you know, Black History Month and gotten, she gets in a lot of trouble. But what in the world was that moment? I mean, they were showing people in the audience confused. I was confused. Here's a woman who was in Clueless 20 years ago, and it just made no sense to me whatsoever. That joke fell flat. Let's look at some upsets at the Oscar race last night. One, Mad Max was just taking every technical award, and rightly so. But when it came to visual effects, Ex Machina took it. I mean, I, that was a truly a big shock. Because it went up against Star Wars. It went up against some really big special effects heavy kind of movies. And Ex Machina, which in its defense, if you didn't believe she was artificial intelligence, if you didn't believe that she was actually created and she was like a robot and you know that has advanced intelligence the movie wouldn't have worked so it was very walked a very fine line and it absolutely worked so that really showed the the commitment that they had because when the guys got up there going look we had no idea we were going to win the oscar for visual effects so i thought that was really an amazing moment uh another one was sylvester stallone for best supporting actor he did not win i had sylvester stallone i'm a vegas guy i would i don't bet but i would have bet on that and then mark ruffalo was my second the upset would go to mark ruffalo had no idea that Mark Rylance was going to get it for Bridge of Spies. And when he won, did you notice that Spielberg, Spielberg stood up in the aisle and clapped and shook his hand while everyone else just sat there? I mean, it was just such a kind of like, you know, Spielberg doing this to the Academy because he wasn't nominated for Bridge of Spies. So that was a total surprise. I mean, I would have went to my grave never thinking that was going to happen. Absolutely just blowing me away. Uh, so those were the two. Let's see what else. Leo, it was his night. I'm sorry. Got my notes over here. Sorry. Can't remember everything. Leo DiCaprio, I'm so happy for him to win. I love Revenant. I had Revenant for picture director and uh, 
a picture director and actor for <laughs> Leo. So I'm just, I love his speech. You know, I'm a big advocate for global warming. I'm a Bill Maher kind of guy. You know, that's my politics if you, if you watch the show. So I thought Leo finally got it. They should got for The Aviator, but you know, finally he got it. I love The Revenant. Fantastic. Inaratu won for Best Director. He had a great speech he was trying to give, you know, about, you know, the, the, about the movie and they were trying to music him off and he just stood his ground. So I thought that was an interesting moment. Uh, but then Best Picture going to Spotlight. Again, that I knew something like that could have happened. It was either between The Big Short and Spotlight, and also Spotlight won earlier for a screenplay uh, with Tom McCarthy and uh, oh, I'm going blank on his name. Also, Tom McCarthy, look around my YouTube channel under interviews. I spoke to him like a couple days before the Oscars. So there's a great interview on my YouTube channel with Tom McCarthy, director of Spotlight. So that was a big surprise too. I was just blown away. So there was a, kind of a few surprises in there. Uh, Ennio Morricone uh, got it for The Hateful Eight, out beat John Williams, his 50th nomination, which was cool because Ennio's never won before. So that was a really great moment. I'm a Hateful Eight fanatic. I love the movie. Where's my thing? Look, I still have it here months later in my little program. Look at that. Dermadu, whatever. Poor Jennifer Jason Lee. She didn't win. Uh, it was kind of hoping, but that didn't happen. So everything else pretty much went by numbers. You know, Best Actress, you know, Brie Larson, Best Supporting Actress, Alicia Vikander for Danish Girl. So those were all kind of, you know, there was a few upsets with some of the bigger awards. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Everything else kind of played by numbers. Louis C.K. was one of my favorite most of the night. Came out to introduce Best Documentary Short, I think. And he was saying, this is the people's highlight of their lives. Whoever's going to win this award, they're going to drive it home in a Honda Civic. And it's going to be in their shitty apartment. Sorry, didn't mean to swear. I told myself I wasn't going to swear on this channel like everyone else does. Anyway, so I thought Louis C.K. was a great highlight of the, of the show, too. I think he should host next year, definitely. All right, a couple more things. Let's check out my notes. Lady Gaga. She did not win the Academy Award for her song. Did you see her performance? There was that documentary about uh, date rape on college campuses and, and uh, you know, an amazing song, an amazing documentary, too. I think it's been on CNN already a couple times. That didn't win, but the Sam Smith... James Bond ripoff, that song we've heard a million times. I mean, that won the Oscar. I mean, just shows you the the Academy. They just think James Bond for the last 40 years, and they're just going to just pick a box that says James Bond next to it. Uh, that, that, that one's a really, that really bugged me. And another thing that you notice, the sloppy direction of the telecast. They were like uh, live cameras that were going, that they, these little sways, and they had Lady Gaga, her performance, they had to pull away the, the particle boards. You're supposed to be peeking through a keyhole, I think. So it's just like really sloppy direction. I mean, it happened three or four times. So I thought that was really, really, uh, shouldn't have happened. All right, the Academy Awards for 2016 are in the book. Can we now move on, please? You know, let's just move on. I'm so tired of the Oscars and all the controversy and doing talk shows and talking about it. We're done. We're done. All right, for more reviews and interviews, surf on over to my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. Check out my podcast on iTunes. And if you like what you see, which I know you do, uh, please subscribe below, comments, thumbs up. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard from Las Vegas. I'll see you next time.